Monday. We're going to go see Santa. Yes. Shh. Santa is a long arm quilter and he lives in the neighborhood. He, he works under the title The Finishing Touch. And so we're going to head over there to see his workshop during the summer months. in Santa's workshop, a.k.a. Hal, and you think all the elves are working hard during the summer. Not, not so, not so. Uh, Santa actually has a whole nother job, and he's a long arm quilter under the name, as I said at the front door, the finishing touch. So he's going to show us his little workshop here. First of all, how long have you been doing it? Uh, I've been long arm quilting about five years. Five years, yes. and why? Uh, I'm an engineer by training, and uh, my wife does a lot of quilting. Uh -huh. And we were in a quilt store, and I saw one of these machines, and I, it had a, it's computerized. So I enjoy uh, the computerized part of it. So I thought, well, this would be kind of fun. And then Denny and I could work together on various projects, which we have done. Yeah. And then uh, we found a lady who was selling a machine, and she already had a clientele. So we purchased the machine. She introduced me to her clients. And then she taught me how to use the machine, so it was really nice. And you took to it just like that. Uh, well, yeah, I had no, I had never touched a sewing machine, and so. Oh, so you don't piece at all. You don't do any piecing. I don't do at any all. piecing. I just do the qu long arm quilting. Yes. But your wife, Denny, she has a built-in honeydew. Yes, she has uh, <laughs> stacks of quilts you waiting that, for me. You get that, You can take off long arm quilting for me. <laughs> I might get something done. <laughs> uh, okay, well, show us, show us a little bit what's going on here. So you have oh an HQ. I, I that's a, like I have a Sweet Sixteen. Yes. So this is the, yeah. It's a handy quilter machine. Uh huh. Uh, this is an an old machine. It's probably ten to twelve years old. Because the lady before me uh, had it for about five years. And uh, so obviously it must be a really good machine. It's held up. These it's, machines are Yeah, it's built working well. well. Uh, I I've love had hearing some, that. <laughs> yeah, I've had some parts replaced as uh -huh. any, anything mechanical does wear out. But we have a, a, a vendor here in, uh, in Bend that takes care of the machines. So he's been very helpful. And he's actually come out several times when I've been having challenges. And, and would that be? That would be Cynthia's, Cynthia's in Ben. Yes. Sewing Center. Yeah. Oh yes, we love them. Yeah. So I see that this quilt that's on the machine now has some of Valerie Wells fabric, which is our local star. And this, uh, so people send you their quilts or they drop them by. They drop them by, yes. Uh -huh. Both. 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 And then you want to talk to them about the design on the quilt and... Yeah, I, I talked to them about what kind of design they'd like to have, what color thread, uh -huh. um, and the backing, or not the backing, but the batting, if they have a preference for the batting. Uh -huh. So but. let's take a look, a closer look at this. Oh, so where, where the maker of this quilt, where does she live? She actually lives in, she's a snowbird, so she lives part of the year in Phoenix. And then uh, right now she's up here living in Eagle Crest for oh. a couple months. Yeah. So she brought this by a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I just loaded it a couple days ago, and I've made several passes. I got about I'm about a little over halfway done with it. Uh huh. Okay. Well, let's see you do something here. Okay. Well, I've got it. Like I say, I've already made some passes. I've got uh -huh. the program already put into the computer. Uh huh. So now I have to uh, position the pattern on the quilt. So that I can make my next pass, and I need to tighten it just a little bit, and then I need to secure the ends. Okay. 
And this is where you're using your engineering brain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because uh, sometimes the computer doesn't always do what you think it should do, so then you've got to work and try to outsmart it. Well, sometimes now, I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. I I love this. I used a long arm quilt, and uh, I've never seen this used. Yeah, this is really. Uh, I think the lady that I bought it from told me that I could do this. Normally, when you attach it, you just put the clips on like this. Right. But it kind of pulls the quilt right off center a little bit. Whereas if you use this, and this is not a real sophisticated contraption just uh, oh the best kind though yeah yeah the and then that way it, when you put it on it, it uh, evenly uh, secures the quilt across the full area i love so, that okay uh one thing that's good with the age is this computer has a dead cell in it so i can't do it i can do most of it by my finger but it works better if i use my uh, mouse if you know what a dead cell there's a cell here that does not work in this in this oh. machine so I have this. This is fascinating to me anyway, because <laughs> the, even the fact that you are using a mouse on the quilt to run the machine, is, <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, yeah, I don't tell my clients I'm using, that a mouse is running over their machine. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to zoom in so I can see the pattern. Oh my gosh. So this is the uh, pattern that I set up uh, on a simulated size of the quilt on the computer. Uh -huh. And then as I roll it, I, I mark the beginning point uh, for the start. So I put this up here and I locate the start point. And then I put uh, in here reposition and it repositions the start point of the quilt to the point where I want it to start. So everything smoothly runs together, the design. Yes, right. So then I check to make sure I have enough space, and I'm a little tight down here. So I'm going to advance the quilt up just a little bit to have some more room. And now you know why you are paying someone to do this, because you don't want to do this. This is way too complicated for me. <laughs> You don't want to run out of space. Whoops, whoops, I lost my point. Put that back in. So I'll reposition my start point and double check. Yeah, now I have enough room to where I can complete the full pattern. Then I need to check uh, some of the points where it's uh, very close. So like right up here, I want to make sure I don't overlap the previous pattern. Don't. I'll go down to this end, double check to make sure I it looks good down at this end. Quilts are, they move, the material, as you obviously know, moves on you, so you've got to kind of double check uh, to make sure you're in the ballpark. Make sure I'm clearing down at this end. Yeah, just barely getting by. I want to try to make the pattern as tight to the previous pass so that there's no, so you can't see a line where the different right. patterns have. So. Some actually, you can get a pattern that should be intertwined so that it's almost impossible to, uh -huh. to see. Uh, I'm going to do one more checkpoint here. Yep, I'm good. Okay. Then I go back. Don't run with pins in your mouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Quilting 101. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Takes a while to think. Okay. This is always a tense moment because this is somebody else's prize and joy. I know. You want to make sure it works right. Uh, yeah, and I so appreciate that you even have that thought. And the other thing that I, I try to do is 
I try to set it up so that I don't have any interruption across the quilt. Now sometimes the thread breaks so you have to have a turn right. and start in the middle of the quilt, but I waste a lot of thread because I don't want to run out of thread halfway through off the bobbin and then have to start all over and put a break in the quilt with right. it. So now there, I know on this one there's enough that it will run a complete length. And you can move this, you can do this faster. Uh, I usually run around medium speed. Uh, I find that that way I don't break thread, I don't skip stitches. Uh, it right. seems to work well. So. And then once it gets past, uh, once it moves, the machine moves off here. So currently, if someone were to bring a quilt to you, how how long are you out now? Oh, probably a couple of weeks. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I that's have about great. I have about five quilts, but most of the ladies uh, it happens to be ladies. Uh, are not in a major rush, uh -huh. and uh, a lot of them are here locally, so they know where to find me. And actually, several are right here in the neighborhood. So uh, yeah, <laughs> we've turned into a quilting neighborhood, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. The other thing I do uh, is I uh, I crawl down and make sure the stitching looks good underneath. As I get older, this might be a problem, but I look, I get up and I look and make sure that. It's, um, I'm not pulling any stitches, and it's coming out looking well. It is, well, so. Well, that's, uh, that's where you need to start giving your elves a raise for yeah. summer work. Yes. You know? You got it. <laughs> get them get down there. Yeah. So then it'll just quilt away. On, on this particular pattern, it's, it takes me about, a, and the size of quilt, it takes about a half hour to run across. Uh-huh. So then what I do is I... Uh, I sit down, and I have my computer, <laughs> or I have my book, so, uh, so and I you, sit and relax. And uh, so you never walk away and go take a bath or anything. Oh, no, when this is going. No. no, no, you can't take that that risk. Right now, I used to have a concern uh, with the foot of the machine catching on an open seam. Oh yeah. Uh, and you try, I try to look for the open seams as I'm putting the quilt on and as I'm doing this, but sometimes you miss it. Also, on the edge, I usually go over the edge a little bit, so sometimes you can catch there. But uh, I think it's Handy Quilter has come out with this new foot. Oh, yeah, it's the big one. The big round uh, kind of sphere. Uh -huh. And so that problem has gone away. So I don't have to worry about that catching a, a seam or anything. Because uh -huh. that's no fun. So, um, how far down the list does your wife get when you get customer quilts? She's she number one. Oh, she's number one! What a smart husband. Yeah. I'm as not as dumb as I look. <laughs> I don't Santa's think so. had a little experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, when I say that that Hal is Santa, I am absolutely telling you the truth. He works. He kind of takes the quilting life during the summer, but let me tell you, come November, he's ramping it up. Oh, yeah. Pretty busy. Pretty, Pretty busy, busy all through December. And last year, I, Santa had the opportunity to have some awesome pictures with Anna's first, oh, or not first, but grandson. Son. Yes. Yeah, and you'll see those again. I know yeah. I keep forcing pictures of him on. But, oh, he was so fascinating. Oh, yeah. He yeah. was he fascinating. He just looked at me with big eyes like, where did this gentleman come yes. from? Yeah. <laughs> so where, how did they get a hold of you? Uh, they can uh, email me at uh, uh, thefinishingtouch.com. Finishingtouch.com. Yep. And I think my email, let me look. I happen to have a card right here. Ooh. And it says you can... Call me at, well, call me at 971-645-7964, or you can email, email me at thefinishingtouch40, F4O, at gmail.com. Sweet. And we'll put that down in the link at the bottom in the description so that if you want to send a quote here, you can feel rest assured that they are taken care of like family.